Bonjour y'all, um, so I made a video, I mean, I promised you guys in my one video where I showed you guys my collection that I'd be making more videos, but I haven't, and then yesterday, April 16th, I posted a video of me saying, stop it in the snow. Stop it! Yeah, I thought today, um, I would do 50 facts about New Orleans for you guys, so that'd be a cool video. And if you're seeing this, cousins of Uncle Junie and Auntie Raquel, happy birthday, Uncle Junie. It is also my sister's birthday today. Whoa! I'm 13 years old. Feels good, still the same. I'm gonna have a different face. So, yeah, happy birthday, Uncle Junie and Leona. Janivasi Verse, the French would say. Now, on to our facts. First fact. New Orleans could have been a pineapple. And if you do not believe me, you can search up New Orleans pineapple on YouTube for yourself and the first video will come up is New Orleans, the founding era, and legit, this could have been an actual reality where we live in a world where New Orleans French Quarter could have been in the shape of a pineapple. Nouvelle Orleans was founded by French Canadian Jean Baptiste Le Moyne de Bienville in 1718. This is John Law, and he was basically in charge of something called the Mississippi Company, or the Mississippi Bubble, and basically his whole shtick was to get people to come to New Orleans. He promoted New Orleans as this utopia where you can get rich quick, but when people came and found out that it was nothing but a hospitable, unhospitable swamp, France had to resort to sending prostitutes, thieves and beggars, orphans, basically the unwanted of French society. Even exiled aristocrats were sent to Louisiana. The clip that you just saw was from the French opera Manon Lescaut, and believe me, I actually searched it up how to pronounce that. Originally, I thought it was Manon Lescute or something like that, but it's Manon Lescaut. Basically, the plot was about this French princess or French dancer who fell in love with this common guy, and then the king got pissed off and sent her to Louisiana, and then they both went, and then she died. Now, not all girls who went to Louisiana were prostitutes. Some were actually from high-class, respectable families. And I'm pretty sure the family sent them off because in exchange for sending their daughters to Louisiana, like their status went up or something, like, I'm pretty sure there was some, like, aristocratic crap going on in the background, like, But mama, why do I have to leave Paris? I like it here. Because daughter, you go and my status will go up, so you go to New Orleans and bring honor to the family. So these girls were known as casket girls because they brought with them casket-like boxes with their belongings in them, so yeah. So you know that thing that hangs in all southern trees? Okay, so the French, when they saw it, they called it Spanish man's beard. And then when the Spanish took over Louisiana, they called it French man's wig. And then when the Americans came, they were like, Spanish moss. The architecture in the French Quarter is not actually French, it is actually Spanish because most of the French architecture burned down in the fires of 1788 and 94. The only remaining French colonial architectures are the Ursuline's convent, as well as Madame John's legacy, as well as Jean Lafitte's blacksmith shop. And since we're speaking about the French Quarter, balconies aren't called balconies, they're called galleries, and sidewalks in New Orleans aren't called sidewalks, they're called banquets. So the present St. Louis Cathedral you see today is not the first one. It was actually built in 1721, and you can't really see much of the first church because all of the colonial archives that existed of French New Orleans burned down in 1788. So the first church was destroyed in 1788, the Spanish rebuilt it, I think it survived the fire of 1794, and that church remained there all the way up until the 1850s. And it was demolished when Baroness Pontabla built her beautiful luxurious apartment buildings, and it was like a beautification project. She put that up there and it was like the St. Louis Cathedral was shabby and dilapidated and falling apart. So they remodeled it and here we have ended up with the beloved St. Louis Cathedral we know today. We are going to talk about the quails now. And Creole is basically the descendant of the original French and Spanish settlers. So, the Creoles try to have everything French. I mean, Paris was considered the mother of New Orleans. And of course, the daughter is going to try to copy her mother. New Orleans had its own French opera house. The Creoles were known for their lavish masquerades and parties that they threw. I mean, even their children were sent to Paris to be educated. And if not, they were educated locally by the French nuns, the Ursuline nuns, who came in 1727. And they were the first nuns to ever step foot in the United States. And the Ursuline nuns are very beloved because they helped the city a lot during yellow fever epidemics and hurricanes. I also wanted to mention, since I mentioned opera already, that New Orleans is America's oldest opera city. Beat that New York. New Orleans had opera operations since 1793. 
and the French Opera House was considered the finest opera house in the country, built in 1859. It was the gathering place of the New Orleans and Southern aristocracy. Famous opera singers like Adelina Patti visited. But in December of 1919, it tragically burned down, and no one knows how. A popular nickname for the South is Dixie, but did you know Dixie only referred to New Orleans originally? Yes. Before the Civil War, Dixie only referred to New Orleans. I made a whole video on this, so if you want a better explanation, go to that instead of watching this, but since you're already here. Dixie, de, is the French word for 10, and basically when the Americans came, they called New Orleans Dixie, and it was first performed at the Varieties Theater in New Orleans. The Garden District was once its own town, Lafayette. After America purchased New Orleans in 1803 Louisiana's purchase, a bunch of Americans came, but they weren't welcomed in the Vieux by the Creoles, so they had to go upriver to establish their own town. What divided the original city between the American side was Canal Street, it was also known as Neutral Ground. From the 1880s to the 1960s, Canal Street was known as the main street of the South. It was where you could go for shopping and entertainment. It was definitely the economic hub. New Orleans had a colored aristocracy, known as quadroons or gente de color. New Orleans, compared to other southern cities, was a relatively relaxed city when it came to race relations. Since colonial times, French masters and Spanish masters interbreeded with their slaves, and the result was the quadroons. The mothers were usually in charge, and they threw these lavish balls, and the mothers watched on as white men, French creoles, would fall in love with their daughters. And if he was a man of means and had money, she would usually accept her to become a mistress of him. Some great movies on the quadrants of New Orleans include The Feast of Saints by Anne Rice, The Curse to Love, and Quadrant.